What is up, Iwu crew? Today, we are going to be covering a story so puzzling, it'll leave you questioning whether or not you are ever really, truly alone. This is the case of Terra Calico. If you like true crime, mysteries, and true stories, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Now, let's get into it. Tara Calico was born on February 28, 1969, and grew up in Belen, New Mexico with her family. Her mother and father, Patty and David, were committed to giving Tara and her sister Michelle the best life possible, as is the wish of most couples when they become parents. By the time Tara was 19 years old and had graduated high school, she had dreams to become either a psychologist or a psychiatrist as she was inclined to help people whenever possible. Tara continued her academic studies after graduation and even managed to get a job as a bank teller in her hometown to make some extra money while in school. Tara's friends and family would constantly describe Tara as one of the most highly motivated individuals they had ever met. And her motivation did not simply stop in her professional and academic lives. Rather, she was also deeply invested in maintaining a physically active lifestyle. Tara absolutely loved biking through the trails in her neighborhood in Bellin, and when she wasn't working or studying, she could be found either doing exactly that or playing tennis with her boyfriend. In fact, Tara was known to consistently bike the same 36-mile route every single day, as long as the weather permitted her to do so. That is, back when the weather was the only thing that would get in her way. On the morning of September 20th, 1988, Tara decided to leave her home on Brug Street around 9.30 in the morning in order to get her daily biking out of the way early to make room in her schedule for other activities. Tara's boyfriend made plans with Tara to play a few rounds of tennis with him around 12.30 p.m. that same day just before Tara's 4 p.m. class. Having started her 36-mile bike ride at 9.30 in the morning, Tara had been understandably worried that she could potentially take too long on her ride to meet her boyfriend in time. So, before she left the house, Tara jokingly asked her mother, Patty, to come looking for her if she wasn't home by noon to ensure that she would stick to her schedule while still enjoying her ride. Her mother agreed to do so, though this time it felt different. You see, Patty normally went along with Tara for her morning bike rides. In fact, it was the mother-daughter activity that brought the two of them more happiness than they could have ever imagined. However, during a recent bike ride, Patty noticed that she and Tara had potentially been followed by a motorist who seemed to stick to almost the exact same route as she and Tara had. Feeling uncomfortable after the incident, Patty decided it would be best to avoid biking for a little while in hopes that the strange motorist who had allegedly followed them would eventually start to ignore the route again. Though Patty was uncomfortable with riding along the same route as they always had, Tara did not mirror such cautionary fears. Rather, Tara was determined to stick to her routine in the same way that she always had. In fact, Patty even suggested that if Tara were to continue biking on her own, that she should at least carry mace on her person while doing so, just in case. Tara, finding her mother's concern slightly overbearing, declined to do so. Besides, the only things that Tara ever brought with her on her daily bike rides were her Walkman, her headphones, and a cassette tape of her choice, depending on her mood. But perhaps, sometimes mother does know best. On an average day, Tara's bike ride would usually take around two hours in total for her to complete. Having left the house so early, Tara assumed she would be back with ample time to get ready for tennis with her boyfriend at 12.30. At least, she had hoped. Tara decided to ride her mother's neon pink huffy mountain bike 
instead of her own personal bike for a change. When she left her family's home with her Walkman in hand, blasting a Boston cassette tape, she set out for her regular route on the bright pink bike down New Mexico State Road 47. As Tara sped down the street with the wind in her hair, she had no idea that it would likely be the very last time that she would ever do so. You see, 11.30 rolled around, and there was no sign of Tara anywhere. At first, her mother was not too concerned, as she understood that Tara was always careful with her time. Patty assumed that Tara had simply decided to try something new or find another way home that was different from her usual route. Besides, Tara had asked Patty specifically to only come looking for her if she wasn't home by noon. Perhaps she had even planned to do something a bit differently than usual. Except that wasn't like Tara at all. Tara was as consistent as she was beautiful, according to her family. When 12 o'clock came and went, and Tara still wasn't home, Patty grew increasingly more worried than she had been before. After waiting an extra five more minutes to be sure that Tara wasn't just running uncharacteristically late, Patty set out looking for her daughter. Driving along Tara's usual route, Patty searched up and down the paths and streets looking for any sign of Tara. Yet, there appeared to be no trace of Tara anywhere. Patty quickly returned home after completing all 36 miles of Tara's usual route. Upon entering the house and realizing that Tara had still not returned, Patty proceeded to call the Valencia County Sheriff's Department and file a missing persons report for her daughter. Nothing about Tara's sudden disappearance made sense to her parents. Not only was the behavior completely abnormal for Tara, she had also left behind her favorite sneakers, tennis equipment, school books, and her purse, all of which she would have needed if she had intended to meet up with her boyfriend earlier than planned. So, where had she gone? Later that very same day, Officers found something that led them to believe that wherever Tara was, she may have been in danger. Along the side of the road, nearly 19 miles east of Highway 47, where Tara had supposedly been biking just hours beforehand, police found part of what was determined to be Tara's Walkman. The Walkman she had been confirmed to have had in her possession before leaving the house for her bike ride. The very next day, a few more insightful clues into Tara's disappearance were discovered a little bit closer to her home. While Tara herself and her mother's bike were still missing, Patty actually found a Boston cassette tape along the side of the road just three miles away from her home. Patty realized that the tape was the very one that Tara had chosen to take along with her on her ride, and it was located on the opposite side of the highway indicating that Tara must have dropped it at the beginning of her bike ride, as she would have been riding in the opposite direction of the house. When Patty learned of the discovery of the Walkman, she began to piece together a possible theory regarding Tara's disappearance. She believed that Tara's belongings appeared to have been left in a deliberate pattern, one that Patty believed was intended to serve as a trail for anyone that would come looking for her. And that was one of the first theories among many that would come out of the mystery that has been Tara's disappearance. Because Tara Calico has never been seen since. Or so we think. In the years since Tara's initial disappearance, the investigation has continuously dried up as there were no witnesses to her presumed abduction. Though witnesses reported they had seen an older, white, or light-colored pickup truck with a camper shell near the area when she vanished. Due to the nature of her disappearance, Tara could have ended up virtually anywhere with anyone, making it nearly impossible for investigators to even come close to finding a potential trail to lead them in the right direction. But there have been a variety of particularly chilling events that have occurred over the last 33 years, 
that some authorities and individuals following Tara's story believe may be associated with her case. Perhaps the most chilling of all is a photo that was located in Port St. Joe, Florida on June 15, 1989, just nine months after Tara's disappearance. The photograph was a Polaroid picture that had been discovered on the ground in a convenience store's parking lot where a white Toyota cargo van had been parked just prior to the photo's discovery. The Polaroid featured the photo of a, quote, long-legged young woman and a smaller boy lying on some sheets and a blue-striped pillow. Their mouths were covered with duct tape and their hands tied behind their backs. The photograph was taken in the back of a white Toyota cargo van with no windows, manufactured in the late 1980s. The long-legged young woman in the photo is presumed by many to be none other than Tara Calico, and even her own mother has felt confident enough to assert that she believes that the mystery girl is her daughter. After finding the photo, officers reached out to Polaroid themselves and determined that the picture itself would have had to have been taken after May of 1989, as the film that it had been shot on was not available until then. Police noticed that in the photo, there was a copy of My Sweet Adrena by V.C. Andrews, who happened to be Tara's favorite author at the time of her disappearance. As well, it was noted that there is apparently a phone number written along the spine of the book, though some of the digits in the number are virtually unreadable. Experts have claimed that there could be around 300 possible versions of the number on the spine, though only 57 of them were valid phone numbers at the time the photo was found. The young boy in the photo has been assumed to be a nine-year-old boy who had vanished in April 1988 from the exact same area of New Mexico as Tara. The mother of then nine-year-old Michael Henley has also claimed to identify the boy in the photo as her missing son. Though Michael Henley's remains were eventually located in the Zuni Mountains in 1990, no one knows what happened to Tara Calico, though many have a feeling that it has something to do with that Polaroid photo. Michael's death was stated by police to have likely been the result of exposure and so his identification as the boy in the photograph is highly contested. Both Tara and Michael's parents ended up meeting with detectives who looked into the photograph. Upon analyzing the photo, Tara's mother noted that the woman in the photograph had a scar on her leg, similar to one that Tara had sustained in a car accident. While looking into the photograph more thoroughly over the years, Scotland Yard analyzed the photograph and concluded that the woman was Tara, but a second analysis by the Los Alamos National Laboratory disagreed with the Scotland Yard, while the FBI's analysis of the photograph was inconclusive. Though no one is 100% positive that the Polaroid photo is of Tara, two more photographs surfaced over the years that have contributed to the discourse surrounding her disappearance. Both photographs were Polaroids, much like the first, and one was found near a construction site in Montecito, California, whereas the other was discovered and later believed to have been a cruel joke. The first photo depicts a girl's face with her mouth covered in duct tape, much like the first Polaroid. Though the image is blurry, it is clear that the girl in the photo has a cowlick on her right temple that appears similar to Tara's and the girl also has a lazy eye, just like Tara. Furthermore, the blue striped fabric that the girl is seen to be laying on appears to be similar to the pillow seen in the first Polaroid discovered. For these reasons, Patty has asserted that she believes that the girl in the second photo is, in fact, her daughter. In the third Polaroid depicting a girl in glasses sitting next to a man on an Amtrak train, Patty was not as positive that the girl could be Tara and has even claimed that she believed that the photo was actually some kind of joke. With reference to the photos discussed, Tara's sister Michelle has mentioned that, quote, 
they had a striking resemblance. As for me, I will not rule them out, but keep in mind that our family has had to identify many other photographs, and all but those were ruled out. It wasn't until 2008 that any new developments in Tara's disappearance surfaced. The sheriff of Valencia County reported that he had actually received information regarding two teenage boys in a truck who had allegedly been seen harassing Tara on her ride back to her house in September of 1988. According to Sheriff Rene Rivera, the boys had both known Tara to some degree and had bothered her to the point that they allegedly hit her bike with their truck on accident. Investigators believe that the boys may have taken Tara away from the scene in their truck and then ended up killing her in a panic before disposing of her body. There is a theory that alleges that one of the boys may have been the son of an influential local law enforcement officer, but this has never been confirmed. Though some officials believe they may have particular individuals in mind, they are not willing to arrest anyone as there has never been a trace of Tara's body to prove any of their theories. In October of 2013, a six-person task force was established to reinvestigate Tara Calico's disappearance, though as of 2017, no arrests have been made and the case remains open. Though there have been few progressions in Tara's case, the FBI announced in 2019 that they are offering a reward of up to $20,000 for precise details leading to the identification or location of Tara Lee Calico and information leading to the arrest and conviction of those responsible for her disappearance. To this day, Tara's case remains unsolved and her family lacks the closure they have so desperately been searching for over the past three decades. If you or anyone you know has any information regarding Tara Calico's disappearance, do not hesitate to reach out to the Valencia County Sheriff's Department or the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Someone out there knows something, and that something could bring Tara's case to a close once and for all. Have you heard of this case before? Do you have any guesses as to what may have happened to Tara Calico? Let us know your theories in the comments below.